good evening. Well, good evening, Oasis Christian Family. Awesome. Okay, we turned on now. It's on. It's on. We got to avoid these arguments. We're on. Off and on. Off on. We have a green light. <laughs> Laughter does good like a medicine. That's one of my favorite things because I have to laugh at myself. All right. Are we on? Off. On. Go. Now. Ooh, look at you, Jeff. There we go. Between Ish and Jeff, we got it going on here. All right. Awesome, awesome. Well, we do welcome everyone in the sanctuary tonight. We thank you for joining us here. We have a midweek service. That is so excellent. So for you on Facebook, just, you know, you've got a midweek service. Just put it in your date book and say on Wednesday when the calendar comes up, it's going to say be at Oasis Christian Center. It's that simple. Then you won't have to worry about trying to get it on your phone or turn it up the volume or whatever. You can be right in here and just gather directly from the Word. So it's good stuff. All right, well, let's welcome the Lord in. Father God, we thank you so much that we do have a church that has a midweek service, that we can come in here and gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ, Father God, and we can get an uplifting word, Father God, and we can just lay our burdens down, Father, and just take a moment to just bask in you, Father God. And we thank you that, you know, where two or more gather, that you are there with them. So we thank you for being here, Father God. We thank you that you love us. We thank you, Holy Spirit that you give us the utterance, you give us the revelation, that you give us the ability to get to know the Father better through his word. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. We thank you for making it possible for the hope of eternal life and, and just to be a guide to help us get through this life. We thank you for that. So, Father, we welcome you in. We welcome in Holy Spirit. We charge the angels to guard over this place, guard over audio, video, and any other hindrances that may try to come against the servant. And, Father, we just give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, today's devo devo devotional, this is not starting good, so we know it's going to be great because if Deborah's not starting it good, that means God's going to take over. Praise God. All right, well, this, the, today's devotion is from Jesus Calling, and it is on peace, and this is really good. It kind of lines up, um, uh, I'm going to be teaching tonight, so y'all go ahead and be praying for that, reaching out this way on uh, having the Lord to speak through me tonight, but um, this goes right in line with, um, with what um, the Lord put on my heart. All right, do everything in dependence of me. The desire to act independently apart from me springs from the root of pride. Self-efficiency is supple. It insinuates its way into your thoughts and actions without you realizing it. But apart from me, you can do nothing. That is, nothing of eternal value. My deepest desire for you is that you learn to depend on me in every situation. I move heaven and earth to accomplish this purpose, but you must collaborate with me in this training. Teaching you would be simple if I negated your free will or I overwhelmed you with my power. However, I love you too much to withdraw the godlike privilege I bestowed on you as my image bearer. I bestowed on you my image bearer. Use your freedom wisely by relying on me constantly. Thus you enjoy my presence and my peace. And one scripture comes from John 15 and 5 that reinforces this. And it says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in him, then you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. So praise the Lord for his word tonight, and we are going to go ahead and turn it over to praise and worship. Glory to God. Can we welcome the Lord in with a good hand clap? Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Praise God. Well, good evening, Oasis Christian family. Good
His praise didn't have to follow me. <laughs> oh, me. But they sure do a good job. Yes, they do. So to the praise team that the Lord helps me with, I, I thank you.
Good evening, Oasis Christian Center. Good evening. It's good to see everyone here this tonight. I'm going to be reading a verse out of the Bible. I asked the Lord today to give me a verse to say, because sometimes I'll have trouble finding one. But he led me to this one. It's Deuteronomy 14, 23, and it's in the uh, Living Bible. The purpose of tithing is to is to teach you always to put God first. So in everything we do, we should always put God first in everything. Amen. So now we'll speak over our tithes and offerings. You get those in your right hand. As I tithe and give offerings, As I, tithe and give offerings I, believe and I, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, jobs, and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, Raises and bonuses. Benefits. benefits, sales and commissions, sales and commissions. Favorable, settlements. favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances. Interest, and income. interest and income, rebates and returns, rebates and returns. Discounts, and dividends. discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Bills decrease. Bills decrease. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. That I may now. That I may now. Have more than enough. Have more than enough. Than enough. To give into the kingdom of God, to give into the kingdom of God, and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now I will speak over how to give. Ways to give online is osvhub.com slash oasis family church slash giving slash funds. Or www.paypal.me slash oasis family church. Or we can also text to give at 334-274-7885. You can use the donate button at www.oasisfamilychurch.net. Or we can also use the cash out and enter the dollar sign Oasis Family Church. Or you can also mail donations, P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama 36877. And now we'll have Deborah to come up and give the word. Well, before we begin, let's definitely go to the Lord. Father God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to bring your word, Father, what you need Deborah to say. I empty myself out, Father God. I'm just a vessel, but it is you that is the word. You are the living water. You are the vine, and I stay close to you. Father God, I thank you for each and every ear that hears, for each and every heart that receives, Father God. For we know that your word is life and truth to the body. And we thank you, Father God, that you will reveal tonight through the power of the Holy Spirit those things we need to know to transform us into your image. And we give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. All right, how to stay out of arguments. And uh, I'm going to begin because we're going to ponder something. Let's just all think of how we can stay out of arguments. Well, I thought of a few. Um, we could not answer our phone. We could not go out of the house. Uh, we could not raise children. We could not go to work. Um, let's see, what else? We could not socialize, get on Facebook, uh, even go to church. Uh, we could not read the news not watch TV. See, those are some ways that if you want to stay out of arguments, you can do that. But let's face the truth. And that is that opportunity for arguments are everywhere. Even when we are a recluse, when we stay to ourselves, inside ourselves is breeding argument, even within ourselves. The flesh wars against the spirit. We want what we want when we want it. And we'll even argue with God. God says, set our minds on things above, not trying to be right in man's eyes, but to be in right standing through Christ Jesus 
with him. So our purpose is being in what God wills, not what we will. So therein comes the first argument. And I taught um, on strike one and strike two, and it all talked about the spirit. And God kind of led me back to that to begin tonight. So just hang with me. We're going to get to, there's four checkpoints that the Lord gave me on how to stay out of arguments. We're going to begin with Colossians 3, 1 and 4. Therefore, since you have been raised with Christ, strive for the things above. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you have now died. See, we died to the old life. And now we are hidden in God through Christ Jesus. So we have a whole separate identity now in the earth. When we do this, that's where the glory of God is. That's where he appears in us. And as we focus sometimes on the distractions or the temptations or the entertainments or other things that we promise us happiness, you know, we're looking to those. We can lose sight as to the blessings we have as sons and daughters of Jesus. When we focus on the have-nots, and we try to keep up with the Joneses. We become anxious, and we lose our inward peace. We must not linger on the old habits, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, step into our new Christian life. Proverbs 14 and 30 tells us that a calm and undisturbed mind and heart are health to the body. God wants us healthy and whole. In Colossians 3, this is 5 through 8, the word tells us to put to death, therefore, the components of any earthly nature and idolatry. The wrath of God is coming on sons of disobedience. When you lived among them, you walked in their ways, but now you must put aside all of those things because they are things that are based on earth. And our desire, our desires that can be impure or lustful, sexual immorality, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, all of that comes from a mindset that is not set on the things above. It's not being transformed into Christ's image. So when we walk in those ways, we're not showing, we're not thinking on what is good and right. When we are looking to earthly things instead of heavenly things, we are flawed in our thinking. We either trust the earthly satisfaction more than God, or we follow God, the one we serve. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says we're a new creation. That means now we're going to follow the, the ways of God, not the ways of man. Also, we are a new creation, and we are created for good works. Ephesians 2 and 10 tells us we are created for good works. Sin impedes our thinking, and it opposes us to a heavenly mindset. In Peter, 2 Peter 1 and 3, it says, Put on your new self, and let, peace, let the peace of Christ rule your hearts, for you are called as members of the body to be thankful so God wants us to have a mindset of thankfulness, thankfulness for what he has done for us. Jesus has called us in Matthew 5 and 9 to be peacemakers. He said of a quiet and gentle spirit, well-balanced and self-controlled. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit, spirit of power, of love, and of a sound judgment. That's also a personal discipline. That's also we're able to remain calm when situations are rough or tough when we come against a conflict. God doesn't want us to be in arguments with ourselves because it sets us up for arguments with not only him, which then we can't hear, we can't get proper instruction. We can't realign ourselves to what God's purpose for us is. But it upsets us on the inside, and then it upsets our outside. And then we become upset with others. 
We become unsettled, and we're not walking in the character of God, but we're trying to prove our own agenda. We're also not listening to God's voice. And how many know when we don't listen to God's voice, we stumble and we get into trouble? Trouble can come with conflicts. Conflicts usually are attached to trouble in some way because there's usually a different person or something that's connected to it that you are struggling with. Proverbs 14 and 30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. When we argue within, we also argue outside, and our body suffers. Arguments stir up strife, and they stir up turmoil. In Proverbs 10 and 12, it says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Jesus tells us to stay out of arguments by having love one for another, just as he loves you. That's John 13, 34. And when I was preparing for this lesson, the Lord led me to Joyce Meyer on um, one of her teachings. She was teaching on how to stay out of conflict. And in this, um, she was talking about what Jesus says in John 13 and 34 about how we are to love one another as he has loved us. And so she had, um, she had said this. This is a new commandment that Jesus has given us to build his character in us. We can walk upright in integrity. We can learn to disagree peacefully. You don't have to give your opinion in everything. And God expects us to get along. And this is what she said. One of the ways that we can stay out of arguments is humility. And then God gave me, check your spirit. It's the hardest thing to overcome it's the hardest thing to maintain. It is our pride. And it's hard to control it. Proverbs 29 and 24 says, One's pride will bring him low, but he who is a lowly spirit will have honor. God honors us when we set aside our will, we set aside our pride, and we honor him by taking on his spirit and presenting ourselves in a way that Christ did, which was to love one another. We're seeing more and more conflict in the world. No one wants to be told what to do. They just want their own agenda. And, you know, people expect respect from you, but yet they don't want to give out respect. And so sometimes it's just really hard to, to humble and to, and to hold your peace when you're around this. But we must humble ourselves and resign ourselves to the authority of Christ that can, can get us safely out of that situation. And we have to check our spirit. Jesus calls us to be humble before God. You know, when Jesus was in his ministry, he had people that were disgracing. I mean, they were just, they were so talking about him. They were slandering him. You know, they were saying ill things about him. They were gossiping about him. They were trying to, to set up groups against him. So everything was, you know, coming against Jesus. And Jesus was all powerful. He could have called the legions from heaven down. And they could have came and rescued him from any situation. But what did Jesus do? He checked with God. He checked his spirit. He prayed and he asked God, God, what should I do in this situation? What is the best way for me to go? You know, a lot of times we think, well, it was easy for Jesus because he was God. No, Jesus grew up. Read your Bible. Jesus was human. Jesus was a, a, was a toddler. Jesus was a student. You know, he tried to, you know, to step out of line one time because he was trying to preach before God's timing. But God put him back in line. And that's where he did. He stayed in line. And he never sinned against God. He just listened to the voice of God and did what God needed him to do. He didn't let any pride, which if anyone could have had pride, it would be the Prince of Peace. It would be Emmanuel. It would be God with us. I mean, the creator of all heaven and earth. Does anyone deserve any more glory? But yet, it was not about his pride. It was about the Father and the mission and the purpose of the Father. 
So in Mark 6 and 4, we should not get discouraged at doing the work of the Father. We should not get discouraged or in conflict with anyone when we're doing God's work because Jesus tells us in Mark 6 and 4, this is from the contemporary English version, version he being a prophet, that prophets are honored by everyone except people in their hometown or their relationships, their closest relationships, their family. So if people are coming against you, friends that you've had, or even your family members, but you know that you know that you know you have the peace of God in you that you're doing the right thing, you stay with God. You stay with God. And your humility before God will help you to stay out of arguments. Arguments with yourself. Because when you become humble before God and you're thanking Him, then He pours out who you are. And He says that you are of the accepted. Let's see, where was our next point? I lost it. Okay. All right. And the next point is that we need to check our surroundings, check who we're hanging around, check what we're listening to, check what's on our mind. Because if we're going out and we've got a lot of things going around on our mind, we're going to be sensitive to anything that comes our way. You know, you see it. I mean, you see it. You're driving down the road and people are honking their horns because you're not going fast enough. Or they're honking your horn, their, you know, their horn at you because you didn't, you know, put your blinker on or you didn't do that. Everybody is, is, we're running in like high mode. And that's the way, that's the way uh, the devil wants it. He wants us not focusing or checking our spirit with God, checking in with him. He wants us to be going of our own accord and what we think is right. And he wants us not to pay attention with what's going on around us because he can throw us a curveball. And he knows that if we haven't gotten ourselves steadied before we leave out, that those things are going to be easy to offset a conflict with someone. You know, you can, um, you can look at, uh, say, we're in football season, okay? Everybody has their team, and their team is the best team. You know, I know my team is the best team. So anyway, we all have that assurance that our team is the best team. But, you know, what happens when you put players together Okay, or you put people together and they can be the closest of friends, but you're one way and they're the other. Their end is a brew for a conflict to start. It's very, it's, it's normal. Okay, but is it of God? You know, God has called us out of the world. We can be in the world. We can be at the ball games. We can be at the competitions. We can be at these things and root for our team. But God says you've got to still carry my character. So how many times have we been somewhere and we know what we're going into, but we forgot to get a little bit prepared before we went in? And we went in with an attitude, I'm all that, and someone else comes up and they're, I'm all that, then what you got is two minds colliding on who's the better person. God never wanted us to judge anyone whether, are you greater than I? Am I greater than you? He said, judge yourself. That's right. And we're to judge our inward thinking. We're to judge our mindset. That's what we're to do. We're not to look at someone else and judge, well, should they like that team, or should they be dressed like that, or should they do this? We're not to judge that. We are to judge, to check our spirit, and to hold back from conflict, because Jesus said to love one another. So even in the middle of conflicts like that, God gives us ways out. He does give us a way out with every temptation. And so we have to, number one, reset our attitude. That's the first thing. And we don't want an attitude of being a fool. Nobody wants to look like a fool, feel like a fool, sound like a fool. Okay? But Jesus said there are fools. Okay? And he wants us to recognize those fools. Okay? I'm sorry. If it applies to you, you say amen. But, you know, everybody, everybody in Oasis is hushed because we, 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 we don't. We're, we're trying to learn about this thing called foolish behavior. You know. <laughs> anyway, but the New Living Translation says, when you walk with the wise, you become wise. 
And when you associate with fools, you're going to get into trouble. That's Proverbs 13 and 20. Proverbs, I admonish you to go to Proverbs. I, it's, it's probably going to hurt a feeling or two inside of you. Probably going to make you feel uneasy. You're probably going to say, oh, I don't know that I can do this. Ask for the power of the Holy Spirit when you read it. I'm telling you, when you go in, I'll go, God, you love me. Remember, I'm just human. Remember, you died for my human flesh. We're not going to deal. We don't have to deal with that. You're dealing with my spirit. And you know what? I just I have this little side journey. God forgave you of your sins. Did you know that? You're not even supposed to be thinking on those things. Even when they try to come up, even if you follow through with them, God says, get over it, repent of it immediately, and draw back to me. God is working on your spirit. Mm -hmm. See, because we are spirit. Uh -huh. We are spirit. The spirit man is being recreated. The spirit man is changing. Mm -hmm. The human flesh is what we see, but the spirit man is what's going to remain. Uh -huh. It's going to remain in the atmosphere when you walk out the door. It's going to remain in the conversation that you had with someone. And God wants it to lead back to him. For his glory. That's where the spirit moves. So God, get off. I'm not good enough for this and I'm not good enough for that. Quit beating yourself down. Because you are good enough for God. Yeah. Always in all things. When you do something that you know that, you know, you found in God's word, you've come to the understanding and you just can't defeat it. You know, you're just trying everything you can but you fall back into it. Just Step right back up. Right. Step back up. Because in God's eyes, you already stepped back up when you said, I'm sorry. When you said, God, I am sorry. And then you say, help me, Jesus, to be better. That's right. So you're humbling yourself. Now what you're doing is setting your inside conflict back to the knowledge and the wisdom of God on heavenly things, not on what you're facing right here. Now you can take that and have a better attitude in the surroundings that you go into. But God wants us also to be aware of where we go. Some places that we went to and some people that we were around before, we can't be around anymore. Amen. And it's not because God doesn't love them. They can be Christians. Okay? They can profess the Lord. It's not that He doesn't want you to love them. But you have to judge for yourself whatever is going on with them that you may have a conflict with or a disagreement with. If you have not set before God honestly that disagreement and worked out some kind of, and this is the, another, the next point, exit point, if you have not got that set in your mind, you're not settled. And until that peace that passes all the understanding, you don't need to deal with that conflict. You don't need to go in it, touch it, be there. Because a fire is going to burn. And it may not do it the first time because the devil's sneaky. You know, the first time he just kind of, you just kind of slide on in there. And it's kind of easy. The second time it's maybe a little nudge on, on your shoulder. But you go, oh God, you, you know, I repent. But then he keeps putting it to you because you keep going to the same place. With your mind, with your thoughts, and with your body. That's what repent means. Repent means don't go there. Mm -hmm. Don't do that again. So something's got to change. Your attitude towards the conflict has got to change. So how can you stay out of conflict with other people? Adjusting your spirit, knowing that God loves you. Looking at your attitude and looking at your surroundings, being aware of what is, what is around you and what's going on. Because we're to be doing the work of the Father. We're not supposed to be uh, foolish, and I think I skipped over some of those, so I need to read this Proverbs because I kind of got off side journey. Proverbs 29 and 9 says, If a wise man has an argument with the fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there's no quiet. So that means confusion and turmoil. Now, you haven't got to be a Christian for very long to understand that God is peace. He is not a God of turmoil. He's not going to send you in something and just have all this chaos going on. When he sends you on, you go, when he sends you in, you're going to know that you know that you know, and you're going to have peace, and you're not going to have to act a fool. 
But it also says, get this, in Proverbs 29 and 10, bloodthirsty men hate who is blameless. Do you know that you are blameless before God? Others may see the things, you may even notice the things that you're dealing with that are sins against God or just behavior that you want to change. They may not necessarily be a sin, but it's just things that you want to get better with. And they can pick at you and pick at you, not uplift you now, they're condemning you. Condemning is not a spirit where God is. God is a God of love and conviction, so he will draw you to him and he will gently. What is Jesus? A gentle and quiet spirit. He's not going to draw you in with confusion and hollering at you and trying to tell you you're not this and that. He's not going to condemn you. But a bloodthirsty man is going to do that. And a bloodthirsty man, he also seeks the life of the upright. I couldn't believe when I read this. And number 11 says, A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. When I read that a bloodthirsty man hates the blameless and he seeks the life of the upright, God is letting us know right there that there is danger in arguing. It is dangerous. You need to look at it as it's a big pit that you've come to in the road. And unless you've got the bulldozer and you got everything in the gravel and you're ready to fill up that pit, you better not go there. Because it is the devil's mission to make sure that you do so that those of wrath, these fools, these bloodthirsty, demonic, evil practices that are attached to people. We love the people, not the practice, okay? But God is trying to protect you from that. People are getting so upset over the smallest things today, and they're even murdering people for the littlest of little things. Their hearts are cold and callous because they can't see God. They stir up strife and they stir up trouble, and it's all fear-based. Everything is fear-based. Because outside of God, we don't have that hope. We don't have that security. And we're fearful of things. Even as Christians, we get fearful of things. But we know where to take it to. We take it to God in prayer. We take it to his word. We take it to others. We have, that's why we have the church. That's why one of the, the benefits of having a church is because we can confide in one another. We can help one another. And when people are getting in conflict outside of here, okay, say maybe it's, it, it's trouble in a situation uh, that requires the court, or maybe it's trouble in a situation financially. They've got something that they're in conflict with. But we as Christians, coming together, trusting God, in a relationship with one another, we can help one another, and we can give advice, and we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be the light in the middle of that conflict. And God says that when we come against these people, we're to walk away. Just walk away. Just let them have their say. And you pray for them. Matthew 5 and 44 says, love your enemies. That doesn't mean you love the sin or be blind to it. That doesn't mean that you've got to go in and be their savior. Some people just will not listen to you, but you can pray for ministering angels. You can intercede. You know, Jim's been talking on that, on the power of intercession. And you can intercede for ministering angels to be put in their path that will help them to understand what they need to change. Because we don't want people being angry and without hope. And we know that that's at the center of every conflict. So you can excuse yourself and um, just, you know, pray for them. Say, God bless. But whatever you're doing, just do it as to the Lord. If you remember that, that's going to give you an attitude to be kind, it's also going to give you an attitude that lets the peace of God rule in your heart. 
And that's what the Lord tells us to do in Colossians 3 and 15, is let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and be thankful. So are we reflecting our inside when we're angry? God got angry. Jesus got angry. I cannot forget what Pastor said a couple of weeks ago, the scripture that was up on the screen, and I can't remember where it was, but it was in the beginning. It's when he was dealing with Moses, and he got so angry because the people were just gathering together. They were pulling against God, and they were pulling against Moses. They were stirring up conflict, and God was angry. But Moses had to remind God not to destroy him because they were his people. And that's what God wants us to do, is to remind God's heart. When someone hurts us, God knows that. He knows it. He knows when we're in conflict with someone, when they're trying to stir up trouble in our life. God sees that. But he wants us to still remain humble and go on and forgive them and walk in the way he needs us to go. God doesn't want us to stay in abuse. You're not to stay in abusive situation. That is not being humble. You know, some people think that, well, I'm just going to let them say this to me and do this to me. No, that's not right. But until you get the, I guess, the foundation and the scripture and you feel armed, you've got a piece of God in you to deal with that person, you need to stay back because you're out of alignment. Because when God aligns you, he's going to prepare you to handle that, that situation of conflict. And it will be done for God's glory, and it will be done for their benefit. Now, whether they receive it or not, or even whether you receive it or not. See, sometimes we're in conflict with people, and God is wanting us to, to pay attention to it because it's something that we've got to deal with in our own self. I mean, how many times have we felt like... Um, you know, aggravated because somebody is doing something that we're not doing. Or they're getting a benefit that we don't have. And we can get in a, a self-pity party. And God doesn't want us feeling pitiful about ourselves. Because then every time we go in a place or we meet with someone, we're going to see or feel as if we're being left out. And that's the first strike starter inside of us is when we start thinking of ourselves more highly than we should. When we get a spirit of me, 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 then God has nowhere to go. And just like we, you know, um, I had said earlier, you know, God is a gentleman. He created us with his power, but he's also given us the grace to say no. He's also given us the ability and will to choose it or not. He could come down and just change everything. But he wants us to love him and stay in respect of him. For him to get the glory. That way, you can't take the glory for anything that he does. That way, people won't be drawing from you and expecting you to be the Savior. They'll be pointed towards Jesus. That's good. First Peter 3, 3 and 4 says... Let it not just be of outward adorning. Now, most people think about this as the woman adorning herself and her hair and all of this. But let's look at this from a, a different perspective. Let's not just be of outward adorning. But let it be of the inward adorning. And the hidden places of the heart. Not anxious or hot-headed or wrought up. Instead, settled and beautiful to God. Our attitude can break or make a situation at any given time. An argument can come up just in a minute's notice. The devil is constantly, what does the word say? He's constantly roaming around to see who he can devour. He automatically comes at the reading or the presence of the word to try to grasp hold of it and destroy it. So we know that. So God tells us that we need to adorn ourselves from the inside. That means staying close to him, keeping ourselves in a thankful mode, and staying settled on the inside, just like Jesus said. 
a gentle and quiet spirit. We can te tear people down or we can lift them up with our attitudes. And we can be brought down by who we hang around and who we listen to. And we can be brought down if we're not in a spirit that is putting God first, if we're walking in our own human flesh. But God is so good, and, and he does give us exit strategies. So this is the advice that the Lord said. He said, I give you with every temptation a way out. And so this was, as Pastor was saying, my interpretation, these are Deborah's interpretations, of, with a way out. We have to practice how to remove ourselves from heated, heated discussions. We have got to vision how we would like to see this situation come about. How would we like it to end? We also have to look at our attitude, and we have to choose to be kind we have to choose to be quiet and smile and just nod at some situations. It's okay if you don't reply to everything someone t says to you. You don't have to give your opinion to everybody. Some people aren't going to receive it. They can't receive it. They don't understand it. So we are fighting within ourselves when we try to stay in these situations. So we have to have something that helps us to exit from the problem. God sees it as a protective measure. And so he wants us to think things through before we deal with a, a situation that we know is going to cause conflict. Now we know that every second some conflict can happen. But if we keep ourselves already prepared on how am I going to handle when this happens? How am I going to handle God when this person irritates me? How am I going to handle God when this person, I need this and that person got it? And so God wants us to, to vision this in our mind, how the best scenario of this can be, how we can be the best person, and to practice a conflict resolve. I was talking about, you know, being at a party for a football game or at a football party. You've got several different people of different, they like their, their team, and everybody thinks their team is number one. And in their eyes, it, they are number one. But you know what is crazy? We can get into an argument about that, and we have nothing to do with that game. We don't know who's paid for that game. We don't know who's got a hurt, you know, leg. We don't know all the things. We may know stats, but we're not playing the game, but yet we feel as if it is us doing it. And we can take on all these emotions that we can get all riled up, so you just got this big mess trying to start coming. So if you know that you're going to a party, this is one thing you can do. You can go ahead and just text a friend, maybe somebody in the church that's on the same team as you, and say, girl, boy, I am going into this party tonight. And I know that so-and-so is going to be there, and they think this way. And I'm going to need you to pray for me. I'm not joking, people. We've got to get serious about prayer. We've got to get serious about God's way. This is not some cartoon. This is real life. And we've got to get serious and call them up and say, hey, I need you to do this. Especially if their team is winning. You need to. I'm not the one wanting you. And you need to call me so that my phone can ring. Let me tell you what this does. God always says that if two or more agree, then he's there with them. So if you're over here by yourself trying to handle this confusion and stuff that's going on and people yelling at you, it is human nature to want to be defensive or to be offensive. Okay? And all you're there to do is to have fun and to celebrate the teams. You're not there to create any kind of... Confusion, but we know that as you showed up, we're sure there's some demons that showed up. And so we have to be prepared for that. So just call a friend. Just text them. Before you go in, say, girl, I'm going in. I need you to call me, to text me. Just just whenever you can, just continue to do it because, girl, I'm going to need some backup. 
This way, you have got a deterrent if you need to exit stage left. Okay? Now, we, another thing we do, of course, is, you know, we give the name of Jesus. But how many of us know that we can go into a situation in the name of Jesus, and Jesus ain't nowhere to be found in our thought pattern? We have to be honest. So what we're doing is we're going in with the spirit of condemnation. The devil's laughing because we're going in the name of Jesus. These people don't know Jesus. Or maybe they've heard of him. They don't believe in him. And so what are they going to do? They're going to look at you like you a fool. And now you've done exactly what Jesus said don't do. Don't be like the fool. Be wise. So we've got to rechange our thinking. We have got to renew our mind. We have got to take this serious. This is not, this is the way we go to church and this is how we play. Because conflict is everywhere. And we, as Christians, are to bring heaven to earth. We are to make a difference. Even when we go to a football game and their team won and everything in you is, mm, you, you just you can't say it. Ask God to help you say it. That was a good game. <laughs> Your team did good. <laughs> and then try to hold back and not say, we're going to get you next time. Because you got <laughs> You know, that's not where God, God's trying to get us over here to where we can walk away with integrity. So that we can leave people Leave them intact, okay? Leave yourself intact and not give the devil any leeway to cause any worse trouble. Because, you know, I hate to say it, but there was a ball game with our high school students just a few weeks ago, and there was gunshot. Gunshot. I don't know if people were hurt, but, you know, this is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. We are thinking way too much of ourselves way, way too much of ourselves. And as a church body, they're watching us. And what they're doing is building their strategy to come against us. Because they think, we think we're all that. We're not all that, but God's all that. But if you're showing that we're all that, and we're trying to walk in in judgment and condemnation, we're not bringing in Christ. We're bringing in our own motive. And that is going to be a conflicting situation. So let's begin to look at arguments as a difference of opinion or as an opportunity for God to do a good work in us and do a good work in them. You may not, um, you may not can... hang around a lot of people, like I said, that you used to hang around. But you can thank God for what was there, and you can thank God for the lessons you learned, and you can thank God for the good change it made in you, and you can let him mold you to a better person. And as this happens, who knows, he may be aligning all of that relationship. He may be bringing all that back into restoration because isn't that what God does? But he's not going to restore us to our old self. So get over that. If you think that now that you got Christ, you can do what you want to do because you're saved. That, you know, that's, that's not true. Because as a man thinketh, think so is he. And God says you're a new man. So... You're not a new man. If you're not dealing with the old man, then, you know, you're not, not dealing with God's way. Because he dealt with it for you and put Jesus on the cross. So we're not worrying about the sin itself. Quit being sin conscious. Oh, I'm this old rugged sinner. No, you are saved by the grace of God. And you are powerful. And you have a new mind. And a, and a new self-esteem. And a new power. And God wants you to use it wisely and use it for him. Rest in God's love that he knows the best 
to bring peace in your life. Be ready to keep the peace as Jesus has called us. Leave them with a blessing and pray for them. Walk away from wrath. Let God bless you to be a blessing. And I thank you. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and close out, and we thank everybody in the sanctuary tonight. I thank you for drawing. I thank, thank you very much because I'm telling you, when God brings something forth, I never know exactly what he's going to say. And believe me, I am human, and I start thinking, you know, did I do the right thing or say the right thing? But let me encourage you that the Word of God is the right thing, and it is the way to do the right thing. And even though we as humans may not always look that part, God is that part. And God wants you to judge him for your own self and be in relationship with him, your own self. And then he wants you to get together with like believers because it's in that likeness that you both encourage and uplift one another and that it helps in your times of trouble and it helps to, to bring love instead of stirring up hate and, and, and strife. And even in the church, and I know you might even say churches do this, you know, there's strife in the church. Well, that's wrong. I mean, we got to admit it's wrong. It's a behavior that has to stop. We have to quit pairing one against the other and say, you know what? You're in your walk with God, and you're in his word. And as long as you are not taking away from this word, not adding to it, and you are seeking it out. And like Pastor encourages us in all different in, in all different languages. Because you know, we all have different perspectives and we're all at different points in our life. And sometimes the King James worked. But now we need a passion translation. You know, there's different translations that feed our soul and our spirit. So whatever we have to do to stay out of conflict within. So that we can get along with people and spread the good news. That's what we want to do. So we thank you for joining us tonight. Let's finish out in prayer. Father God, your word is truth. Your word is life. And Father God, we thank you. We thank you that we can join together, Father God. And that we can listen to your word, Father God. And that you feed us this good word, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that you bring healing. That you bring restoration, Father God. And that your love helps to meet every conflict, every problem, every need. And we thank you, Father God, for that. We thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. We repent and we give you all the glory for our life eternal and our life today. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to have a social that is going to be on September the 19th. Uh, if you've not signed up, the, or excuse me, September 17th. So if you haven't signed up, sign up in the foyer, the menu, so that Chrissy can know what we need to have. And uh, welcome your friends and your neighbors and even your enemies. And we're going to have a great fellowship. And that is on Sunday, September the 7th, following worship service. Thank you. Thank you. We need to sing happy birthday to Miss Carol. Oh, that's right. Okay.